What's up everyone? Super fun project today. We're gonna make a cutting board. So I was on the Googles and I found this sweet looking pattern. It kind of gives me a little retro feel there. And I was thinking this would be awesome as a cutting board. So I looked at the pattern a little bit closer. See, how is it that I can make this? And what I think is I want the inside part to be maple and the outside to be walnut. And then maybe all those cross sections would be maple too. I think that would look really cool. But how do we do that? Well, for me, I think I would divide it up into quadrants and say, we really have three pieces of walnut and then one piece of maple. So if we make squares like that and then glue those pieces together, that'll give us one quadrant for our pattern. So then we can take that and then we can add a thin piece of maple and then another one of those quadrants another quadrant, maple, and keep building out the pattern until we get the whole thing. I'm thinking I'll probably make this about three feet long or so. I know that seems kind of long, but I'd rather have extra than run out at the end. And then we could take that and we can slice it at the table saw. We can turn our pieces around, put some pieces of maple in between, glue them together. Then we have this sweet looking pattern. So I'm gonna start by grabbing some wood, breaking down some lumber. I need to make those little squares of the maple and walnut, and then we can move on from there. That took a little bit of time, but I got all of my pieces cut up and I made them about three quarters of an inch thick, maybe a little fat of that, just so I have enough room so that I can clean these up and stain them after they're done drying. So I'm gonna glue these together and I'm gonna glue one maple to one walnut and a maple to walnut and so on. But as long as I have a dry edge against a dry edge, I can use the same pair of clamps to clamp all of this together. It's gonna save me a lot of time. Now for glue, I'm gonna use type on three. This is a cutting board, it's gonna be exposed to water and this is waterproof, so that's what we need. Next step is, after all this is glued together, I will take all my pieces out and then I need to clean them up, run them through the, the planer or the drum sander or just or hand sander, whatever I need to do to make sure I get all the glue off and then we'll move on to the next phase. New day in the shop, I let my glue dry overnight and then I cleaned them up. I took them over to the joiner, I took just a hair off, just enough to kind of get rid of that glue off the bottom. Then I ran it through the drum sander to sand it nice and clean. Then I took some walnut over to the table saw and I cut it so that it is the same width as my pieces. So when you put these together, you'll see that you have the walnut and the maple and then you have one big walnut, which is the equivalent of two walnut squares. So I am gonna glue these together, but I'm not gonna glue the whole panel together. Just like before, I'm gonna glue these two pieces together, dry edge, these two pieces, dry edge, and so on. We'll pop these out of the clamps, get all this cleaned up. And while all of this is drying, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on the maple strips. So if you remember the diagram, I had about an eighth inch thick maple strip in between each piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and mill those up and get those ready. That way, whenever this is dry, I can take these out, I can put my maple ones in there and reclamp the whole thing. Now that we cut the maple strips, we can actually start to see our pattern. So I can put the strips in here and I put them in between the, the maple squares. And now we're gonna glue this whole thing together. So we're really close to being done. 
I'm gonna glue all of this together and then we're gonna end up cutting it into strips and then flip those strips around. Now, while this is drying, we could do some other stuff. We're gonna want maple strips also across the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and glue up a big maple panel that is at least the width of my board and I'm gonna make it the same thickness as my stripes here. That way, whenever I cut all of these into strips, I can also cut that maple panel. It'll make sense as I do it. I always double check my pattern before I apply glue because I'm not gonna say that I will put my pattern wrong. I'm just saying that might have happened before. I know that some people are probably saying, but why didn't you glue this up when you glued that up? There's a thousand different ways you could do this. You gotta do it the way that works for your brain. And what I've learned is I need to take complex glue ups like this one step at a time. Otherwise, I will end up messing up the pattern. And I don't wanna do that. So there might be other ways you can glue this up, but this is the process that works for me. Whenever I'm gluing up panels like this, I like to use calls. So these are just some pieces of MDF that I got. And I put some packing tape on the edge so that they don't stick to the board. And I just like to clamp these across, that way I get a flatter panel. But when it comes to This is looking sweet. Look at that. Nice and smooth. Now it's time to cut it into strips. So I'm gonna take this over to the table saw and we're gonna cut strips of whatever thickness you want your cutting board to be. With mine, I think I'm gonna shoot for about an inch and a quarter thick cutting board. So I might cut it just a little bit, just a little bit more than that and cut my slices and then we'll put them together. And at the same time, I did make my maple panel here and you can see that it is a little bit wider than my board. So while I'm cutting this into those inch and a quarter strips, I'll also cut my maple. That way I could put all this together. We're gonna do our final glue up and then a whole bunch of sanding. It's exciting to see the pattern all come together. So now we can actually do that final glue up. So when I'm doing this, I don't really care about the edge being aligned. I really care about the pattern itself. So I'm just gonna take my time, glue one piece up at a time, lining each block up, each line up the best that I can. We'll get all this clammed together, let it dry. I think this looks really good. It's good to actually see that final pattern come together. Now, the next step is let all of this dry and then we'll clean it up and then we'll actually get to see the fruits of our labor. There's a couple ways you could do that. You can um, use a router and clean up with like a router sled, which I've done. If you check out the video up there, you can watch it. You could also use a CNC if you're lucky enough to have one. It's probably the easiest method or you can go old school and you can sand it flat using a belt sander, orbital sander, or if you're lucky enough, a drum sander. I spent quite a bit of time getting everything prepped. I ran through the drum sander and got both sides of it flat, and then I cut my board to final size. I always like to have my board to be a little bit bigger than what the ultimate size is gonna be, so I can cut it down to the dimensions that I want. Then I cut a bevel on the underside of all four edges. I really like that. It's easier to pick up, and I just like the look that it gives. 
And then I sanded the crap out of this thing from 120 grit all the way up to 220 grit. So it is super smooth now and it's time to apply finish. I'm gonna go really simple. I'm gonna do some oil wax combo on it, let it soak in, buff the wax out, then we will have ourselves a finished cutting board. I'm not a huge fan of doing the, the mineral oil bath that a lot of people do where they just soak in mineral oil. It's just not for me. It, it just is kind of messy and mineral oil doesn't ever really dry. So what I like about this stuff is it's just some wax and it does have the mineral oil in it, but because of the wax, it's not just a big soggy mess. So I dig that. You don't have to buy this. You could really make your own if you want to. I love the way this is looking. You can really see the contrast in it now. Oh, that looks so good. I think this turned out really good. I like the way it looks. I really love the pattern and cutting boards are a lot of fun to make. I've made a couple of them. I got a video on a houndstooth cutting board, which might be my favorite. Plus the video has holograms and who doesn't love holograms. I also have a plaid cutting board and I might have some more. I'm not sure. I got like a hundred and something videos. So you can always check those out, but hopefully this video inspires you to get in the shop and build a cutting board for yourself or as a gift. People love getting these things as gifts. So it's always good to make one. So until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.